Hey folks, Dr. Lava here. Well, over the past year, I've covered all the best cut content from Pokemon Generations 1 through 5, but with Halloween and Luigi's Mansion 3 right around the corner, I thought I'd take a quick break from Pokemon so I can catalog all the best material that didn't make it into the original Luigi's Mansion back in 2001. The game was first revealed at Space World 2000. At that time, it was just a tech demo showing off the graphical capabilities of the GameCube, which was due out the following year. But after that, Luigi's Mansion was put through a lightning quick development process so it could hit store shelves in Japan on the same day as a GameCube. It released just 13 months later, going on to become a cult classic and the GameCube's best-selling launch title. But just like most games developed in such a short time span, Luigi's Mansion had a lot of unfinished business. Unfinished business? I have no unfinished business. I have my treasure, my mansion. I have everything. I'm just perfect. <laughs> wait, wait, I lied. I have unfinished business. Lots of unfinished business. So let's have a look at the top 5 scrapped ideas, chunks of cut content, and even some region exclusive content that you never got a chance to play in Luigi's Mansion. According to the game's director Hideki Kano, there were quite a few ideas for the mansion that didn't end up getting used in the game's final build. In a 2001 interview, he explained that the developers wanted to include an underground cave connected to the basement that would have expanded the total size of the mansion. This unused cave concept shows just how much Resident Evil must have inspired the development team that worked on Luigi's Mansion. Resident Evil, of course, was a 1996 survival horror classic whose story is also set in a creepy mansion. A mansion that was home to an underground cave that substantially increased the game's total square footage. In that same interview, Kano goes on to say that the game's early designs had a sort of RPG system that would, as he put it, upgrade the stage after certain actions. By that, I think he means that after completing particular in-game objectives like defeating a boss or maybe capturing a specified number of boos, the entire mansion, or at least certain sections of it, would be affected in some way. Maybe by spawning more ghosts, or increasing the strength of its existing ghosts, or possibly something a little more novel, like additional power outages. But unfortunately, it seems there just wasn't enough time for some of Kano's concepts to become a reality. Luigi's Mansion was released in Europe six months after it came out in the US, giving Nintendo time to create what was essentially Luigi's Mansion Master Quest. Completing the game in any region unlocks Hidden Mansion mode, but the European version of the Hidden Mansion was unique. The entire game is mirrored left to right, and it's also much more difficult. Enemies deal twice as much damage, and many of the game's more prominent ghost encounters have been significantly altered to be tougher. For example, during the Belossus fight, Luigi actually has to ride his Poltergust, making him much harder to control. In the Hidden Mansion, boos are faster and have more HP, and you're required to catch 45 of them to complete the game, rather than the standard requirement of just 40. And there's also a lot more regular ghosts floating around the mansion as well. Like in the Artist Studio, for example, where there are normally just three of each ghost type, but in the Hidden Mansion, there are five, totaling an additional 14 ghosts in just that one room. Hidden Mansion mode was included in every country's version of the 3DS remake, but many features of the old European Hidden Mansion, like the entire game being mirrored left to right, unfortunately were not included in the 3DS version. There were also quite a few ghosts that were cut from Luigi's Mansion. The game's internal data includes these two ghost types, labeled Ghost 1 and Ghost 2 in Japanese. They appear to be leftovers from the Space World build, but they ended up going unused in the game's release version. This creature can also be found in the game's internal data, and you can actually summon him back into the game by using cheats. He was probably once meant as a boss, but his model was never finished, although he does still have some animations. This pre-release screenshot from E3 2001 shows a chef ghost in the kitchen. In the release version's kitchen, spinning pots and pans mysteriously attack Luigi all on their own, so probably it was originally meant to be the chef that was throwing all the cooking utensils. 
and this last ghost I'm pretty certain never existed, although a lot of fans seem to believe that he once did, so this one is actually more of a debunking. The October 2001 issue of Nintendo Power Magazine makes reference to a hunter spirit in the trophy room, who it says will want to add Luigi to his collection. The hunter is sometimes cited elsewhere as one of Luigi's Mansion's unused ghosts, but since there's no evidence from the beta, developer interviews, or the game's internal data, this ghost was probably just a rumor started by the guy whose job it was to write the photo captions in Nintendo Power and nothing more. In a 2013 interview with Yoshihito Ikibata, who served as co-supervisor on the 3DS sequel, he explained that the developers wanted to include multiplayer in the original Luigi's Mansion, but unfortunately weren't able to pull it off. Based on the game's lightning quick development, it sounds like they just didn't have enough time to put it together. But clearly, they did put some effort into the multiplayer concept. In addition to the Mario model that's stuck inside King Boo's picture frame, the game's internal data also contains an unused 3D model for Mario, in which he's wearing a poltergust, is stretched to Luigi's proportions, and shares most of Luigi's animations. With that in mind, and considering the structure of the game, with a little more time, it must have been a traditional two-player co-op mode that the developers were working on and it seems likely that there probably would have been some competitive elements worked in as well, like competing over the amount of treasure collected. If Mario had been a second playable character, it probably would have been Peach that was captured by King Boo. Or it might have been Daisy, whose image can be found in the game's internal data, even though she never actually appears in the final build. When Luigi's Mansion was remade for the 3DS in 2018, multiplayer co-op was finally included, but the developers created Gooigi to serve as player 2, leaving Mario to remain locked inside King Boo's picture frame. During Luigi's Mansion's development process, there was a point where the game was fully functional in three dimensions. In a 2011 Awada Asks interview, Satoru Awada revealed that both Luigi's Mansion and the GameCube itself were capable of displaying 3D images. He explained that every GameCube unit sold worldwide had 3D compatible circuitry built in, but the liquid crystals that were used to power 3D TVs were prohibitively expensive back then. Ultimately, they decided it just wasn't going to be economically feasible, so they never brought it to market. But apparently, Awada and his buddies had a functioning prototype of Luigi's Mansion working in full 3D back in Nintendo HQ, which he said actually looked pretty good. Miyamoto, who was a producer on the game, was also present in that interview, and he chimed in to say that the 3D would jump out at you pretty nicely. Of course, the 3DS remake finally brought Luigi's Mansion back into the third dimension but I can't imagine that the 3DS version could possibly compete with the experience of playing with a GameCube's superior graphics on a big screen TV. The game's 3D capabilities were ultimately removed, but with a 3D TV and an old GameCube, along with some technical skills, theoretically, someone watching this video could be the first person to ever get the full Luigi's Mansion experience in their personal home theater. As far as I can tell, no one outside of Nintendo has ever gotten a chance to play Luigi's Mansion the way that it was originally intended. Okay, but before I wrap things up, there's a few more things worth mentioning. According to the game's director and one of its map designers, early on in development, they did some work on prairie and desert environments, but they ended up throwing them out when they decided to set the game in a European mansion. Interestingly, they said that an apartment complex and a ninja mansion were also considered for the game setting, a couple of locations that someday could make great backdrops for a sequel. If you want to hear about more Nintendo Cut content, you might want to subscribe and maybe check out my past videos as well. If this episode contained any factual errors, I'll leave corrections and clarifications in this video's description, along with a list of all my sources. And before I go, I want to give a big thanks to my Patreon supporters who make this kind of research-heavy content possible. If you'd also like to help me continue producing videos like this one, I ask that you please consider signing up to support the channel for a few bucks a month. It really would make a huge difference, and I'd really appreciate it. Okay, that about does it for this episode. Happy Halloween, folks. Thanks for watching.